On this episode, we get to the core of the matter. Explosions, ladies and gentlemen, explosions. But apparently it boils down to... Balls suspended in space and maybe they're moving around a little bit. The results are predictably stunning. Ugh, what is even this? Mmm. Hi everybody, hi everybody, this is Christian. Welcome to LazyDiffs Academy. Welcome to... The advanced schmuck tutorial and if you're saying like Christian you probably should go to the to the hairdresser soon I'm working on it I'm working on it but today we are going to do explosions Woo! now I've been dreading this a little bit it's, it has been some as you notice on the length of my hair it's been a while since the last recording because I've been in the cold mines I've been reverse engineering, you know, the last time I did this and kind of like understanding what I just did, kind of like, you know, wrapping my head around what we're going to do today. We are going to do a deep dive into explosions. We spent a lot of time doing explosions last time around. And so naturally we're going to spend even more time doing explosions this time around because as you can probably tell, this is kind of like my pet topic. I like this topic. I really... Um, prioritize explosions a lot um, but before we get into explosions let me first get into something that I wanted to uh, discuss um, I kind of did this in a Christian from future segment from the last episode um, there is a bug uh, in this in this move function uh, that is um, concerning the muzzle flash so here the first frame of the muzzle flash um, is 35 but um, when I coded it previously it was like something like 43 um so or or maybe this one like one of the numbers was wrong so you this is kind of like the sequence of numbers that you have to have in there for the right animation to appear and there is another thing that i i wanted to also discuss which i think we didn't discuss last time right which is this si which is kind of like the frame of the animation that is being shown this SI value uh, has to start at zero. Uh, previously, it started at one, and the muzzle flash looks slightly different when you start it at one. I'm going to set one to one and the other one to zero to kind of show you the difference. You see how the left muzzle, you see how the left muzzle is a bit more flickery and the right muzzle is more fuller. The right muzzle is the correct one. The left muzzle is the wrong one. And what is happening here is. Um, so we um, one would be the first frame, right? One would be the first frame. But what we're doing here is we set up the muzzle and we do it here in the update function. <clears throat> where is it? Uh, update function, update function. There we go, update function. So here's where we press the button, where we shoot the bullets and we fire the bullets and we set up all the muzzles and so forth. And immediately afterwards, we animate the shots and the muzzle. So what actually happens is like before we even have the chance to draw the first frame on the screen, we advance already to the second frame of the animation if we set it at one. So we have to set it at zero, which is kind of like an off, uh, off bounds value, which is kind of like not, not a number. So that zero gets turned into one immediately. And, and then we're going to get our correct um, sequence of, of animations. So yeah, uh, you want to start with zero here, but also this gives us a hint that maybe uh, in the final version of the game, we have to kind of maybe pay attention to what we do first. Maybe it might be a good idea to do the muzzle animation first and then spawn. It's, it's a bit of a difficult thing. Now, uh, there is also one thing I also want to mention real quick is that um, it's kind of like, there's something weird happening, right? Because we have four frames for the muzzle animation, but we're firing a bullet every three frames. So actually what always happens is this last frame here, this frame and this frame get kind of combined. They always are being drawn on top of each other because we are firing so frequently that one muzzle doesn't have the time to completely animate all the way through before the next one already spawns in. So there is a argument, there is a valid argument to say like, let's just like make three frames and because that will look the same most of the time. And that's fair, that's a fair argument. If we're ever gonna need the extra sprite space, we might reduce the, the muzzle flash animation to just three frames. I'm gonna keep it around like this for now because it kind of works, it looks nice, I'm used to it. And um, because it looks a little bit better, like if you hold the button down, that's true, but if you release the button, 
uh, the muzzle flash dis um, disappears in a more graceful way, I think. Um, and also, we might also change the frequency of the shooting. Like, there's lots of things that might still change. So let's just keep this thing around. Um, but yeah, it's not exactly custom tailored to the shooting frequency that we have. And that's something that we have to keep in mind. Now, explosions, ladies and gentlemen, explosions. Right, so this is our um, uh, master plan. We did the weapons prototype, now comes the explosion prototype. And just like to remind ourselves, what we are trying to do is to make a procedural explosion. We want to make an explosion that is not using a lot or any sprites at all because we our sprite space is so limited. So what we're trying to find out is if we can make a nice explosions without using any kind of sprites. In the past, in a basic schmuck tutorial, we actually didn't use any sprites, so that's fine. Um, but that explosion was a bit simple, and now we want to kind of like find out what is a cool explosion, what a good explosion looks like, and kind of like really dig down and make like something that's really, really good. Personally, I think the explosions are kind of like the thing that drives a schmuck. And that's a con you know, that's a that's a very controversial statement, I think, to a lot of people who play shmups. Like, obviously, if you spend so much time perfecting your skills, you're not just doing it to look at nice explosions. You obviously are engaged with something more, you know, with the mechanics and so forth. And that's true and not good. But I think the explosions, or generally, like, not necessarily the explosions, but kind of like the mayhem of the game, like the, the chaos, the destruction, the, the juiciness of, of, of the interaction. It's something that really drives the initial motivation that gets you into the game and that also sustains you over a long period of time. You cannot get, it's kind of nice to be exposed to the game when it looks nice and feels nice. And so I think actually secretly the explosion, something like the explosions, like the explosions are part of something that really um, sustains shmups and a lot of action games actually. Right, so first of all, we have to figure out what are good explosions. And that's, again, that's kind of like a thing that we already talked about. We have to do some research. We have to play shmups with this idea in mind of you know, looking at explosions and seeing like, oh, I like this explosion. Eh, that's a kind of like a boring explosions. In fact, there's a lot of shmups that get away with kind of like very basic explosions. Good example is Crimson Clover, which is kind of like, a, you know, the one of the, the biggest game of the genres, kind of has boring explosions. And it kind of gets away with that because there's... Visually, there's so much happening in the game anyway, so it's kind of like, it's fine if the explosions are not that amazing. There are other games where explosions are incredible and they kind of like draw your attention to it. So it's kind of like important to play through different games and kind of like pick and choose the games that really blow you away, that kind of like, the way the explosions blew you away, like, you know. <laughs> I recognize when things look good and then I try to dissect why they look good. And I did that, but first of all, I want to show you something that is kind of like important. Um, which is some, let's, it's also maybe it might be worthwhile to look at some real explosions. And um, you quite often, you know, or quite quickly realize that like r realism is not what we're going here for. Or it's not necessarily something that's completely unrelated to what we're doing. We're obviously trying to replicate something that exists in the real world, but uh, we're not trying to do something realistic necessarily. Here's a good a video by Tom Scott. You've probably maybe seen this. Uh, it's kind of like one where he kind of like, shows some explosions and this is kind of like something that you hear every now and then it's like real explosions are actually quite different from what you think an explosion looks like this is a real explosion and if i step through the frames here you, you see that it's just like one frame of fire maybe one and a half frames of fire and then it's just smoke it's like a very sudden flash of fire it's a very sudden flash of fire, and then the offending objects turns into a smoke cloud. And it's not even like a very big smoke cloud, right? That's what a real explosion looks like. And obviously you can see that Tom's reaction, like it's, there's a shock wave, there's a um, sound element to it, but that's kind of like difficult to convey in a shmup. So yeah, that's a real explosion, and we're not necessarily trying to replicate a real explosion, but it's maybe a good thing to note that um, with a real explosion, there's like a suddenness. Like obviously an explosion has a detonation. There's something that, there's a force happening that's instantaneous. And that kind of like instantaneity, something that we are trying to capture for sure. Something that is disappointing about the real explosion is that it's kind of like there's very little fire. It's not glowy, it's not nice and glowy. And that's why there is something that we call the Hollywood explosions, right? And that's what this video is all about, that Hollywood explosions are nothing like real explosions. And this is what you think an explosion looks like, because you're used to seeing these kinds of explosions all the time in movies. 
this is the Hollywood Explosion. So um, let me once again see. You press the button now here, and again, I'll step you through. Now, this is a Hollywood explosion. And as, as Tom Scott explains in this video, this is actually not an explosion. It's more like it's um, gasoline vapor igniting in the air. It's not, uh, you know, explosive necessary. There's very little actual explosive in here. It's just like um, uh, vapor uh, igniting, combusting. So this is a much slower explosion, as you can see, it goes for longer frames. It has a huge, gigantic fireball that kind of like goes through those so beautiful shades of uh, uh, yellows and oranges into reds, into this dark cloud that's illuminated from inside. This is what we like. This is what we are used to from Hollywood. This is kind of like, ah, that's an explosion, you know? But yeah, that's something, it's something that's way slower than a real explosion. So let's watch this again real quick. Yeah, um, so a big element of here is that you can see the fireball and you can see like the evolution of the fireball. And that's something I really like, especially about this shot. You can see this billowing effect where the fireball, because of there's heat inside the explosion, um, the air or the gases are kind of like um, hot and they start rising up and they start like, and, and then they cool down and go down again. So there's like this kind of billowing effect where the, the, the gases in the explosion kind of like recycle, they, they go in circles and rise up. And that's something that you're also very familiar from the famous, you know, uh, uh, mushroom clouds, right? Like when you have like an atomic explosion, there's like this huge mushroom cloud, that mushroom shape is also caused by gases going up because they're hot then cooling down and, and then going down and then creating like the circular motion which creates the mushroom. The mushroom is actually nothing radioactive. It's every explosion can create a mushroom cloud. <clears throat> I, I'm not an explosion expert. If you know more about explosions, do let me know. But yeah, you can see that there's a lot more fire. There is some smoke, but the smoke kind of like disappears. There's this billowing effect happening. So we have like different elements of real explosions that, that we might want to replicate. But again, it's kind of like difficult to make this in Pico 8. Like there's just so much happening. There is like, how do we, like, do we make a sprite? Like what's happening here, right? So one good thing maybe to think about is, or one good place to go to for inspiration of how to depict explosions is anime or like any kind of animated movies. Because they have a lot of explosions in them and, and they kind of like use creative ways of, of showing explosions. If we're gonna accept that we're not actually trying to show realistic explosions, we're trying to kind of like convey something that feels like an explosion, that feels explodey to us, then it might be worthwhile to just look into how other people kind of like try to show explosions in an artistic, in a kind of like more abstract kind of way. And I think um, anime is a very, very good place. There's um, especially a good place because there's a lot of different people doing explosions and um, they all have different takes, like different animes, uh, different uh, artists will have different explosions, will show them in a different way. And with anime, it's always fun to just like, you know, stop at some point. That was a good one. Stop at some point and just like look exactly what actually is happening here. And here, for example, this is a great one. You can see this all the time. It's like, it's just glowing circles. It's just a bunch of circles because, you know, it's an anime. They have just so much time to draw them and just drawing a glowy circle is the easiest way of showing an explosion and you just draw a bunch of circles and that's, that will look awesome because it looks like everything is exploding and you didn't wiggle them around a little bit. So it looks like there's some, there's kind of like this billowing, this dynamic thing happening. Um, but it's just like circles popping off. It's, they don't even like animate. They just like wiggle around. <laughs> it's very efficient, but it works. And it's kind of like interesting to step through individual frames of animation that look awesome and ask yourself what is happening here. These are, for example, more elaborate uh, explosions that we just had here. Yeah, this is a great video. It's called It's a Circus and it's like different sequences from missiles and explosions in, in, uh, from the macro series. It's 20 minutes long. So you get a lot of different samples of different explosions. Right, and something that, and, and I actually wanted to 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 uh, talk about this what we just this thing that we just saw. For example, here's also an explosion, and that's just, just like like four balls, but they're kind of like blended together. There's some shading happening. It looks like a fireball, but it's just balls. You know, it's just like a like a raspberry of balls, and that's fine. Yeah, here's another one, which is, again, it's just like, just a bunch of like blobs merge, merging together. They're, they're kind of like, 
very simply shaded. It's just they're moving around a little bit more. There's more dynamic dynamics happening here, more billowing happening here. But it's just a bunch of blobs together. And some parts, so little dots here, some sparks, particles flying around as well. And this is a very famous explosion here that I also wanted to show you. This is Akira, which is not necessarily a movie that is well known for efficient uh, uh, animation. This is an amazing, elaborately animated movie. And there's like very famous explosions at the beginning. And I love this because, again, it's just like a blob. It's just a huge blob. And it has some little details on the, on the sides. And in fact, some really awesome details. We can see, for example, here how the houses get like basically vaporized and turned into dust on the edges of the explosion. But also, like it's not a realistic explosion anyway. It's, it kind of looks very abstract and and very like impressionistic. You know, it's not really we're not trying to convey anything physical. This is not how real even nuclear explosions don't really look like this. Uh, this is kind of like trying to evoke certain details, ideas that you may be some from real life, but also this, for example, is supposed to show scale and show force, kind of like an overwhelming explosion. You can see it growing. You can see it obliterating the city. That's And you can see it like dwarfing the city as well. Right, so we, what we're trying to do is we're trying to convey a feeling, an emotion. Um, we are trying to maybe um, get inspiration from real things, but we're kind of like remixing them and using the tools that we have to convey similar ideas, but mostly it's all about the feeling of it. And of course, I also looked at some shmups, and here is, predictably, a really nice explosion from Doron Pachi. That's right. So this is a really nice explosion that you sometimes get when you hit ground objects in Doron Pachi. And um, yeah, you can kind of like see a lot of the things that we saw from Hollywood explosion, which is we see like this orange, yellowish, cloud fireball that billows upwards and then turns into smoke. We also see some sparks uh, at the beginning. Uh, generally, this is a sprite animation. There's a lot of individual sprite frames. Um, and I'm pretty sure this is kind of like generated using some kind of, um, probably some kind of, maybe some kind of like package, some kind of like animation package, maybe like something like After Effects using maybe some hand-drawn clouds and then rearranging, scaling them around in After Effects. I would say from my gut feeling. Uh, I really like how the smoke at the end kind of like gets like, uh, like dissolves into wisps. Um, and I like how there's like multiple layers of it. And it's, um, it's kind of difficult to understand what is happening when you just see the animation, so it's a good idea maybe to go through individual frames. Okay, this is a little bit big, but you get the idea. So, at the beginning, the first frame, you see a bright flash. There's a very bright cloud, and it doesn't move. It just stays for two frames, and then it gets, we get a new cloud, which is small. This two, these initial two frames are kind of like the flash, something that we saw in the realistic explosion where you have like a sudden flash for one or two frames. That's that flash. Like, it's like, like a, I think the term for that is a contrast frame. So it's supposed to just so, show, convey the idea that something is flashing, something is bright and, and kind of like hurts your eyes, so to speak. And then you see the actual fireball growing and you can see how it goes from different, you know, there's, there's, this gets really chaotic. There's, you, it gets a lot of, lot of like trails of, of sparks. And you can see this, this ball is going upwards all, all to the side as well. And there's a lot of billowing, a lot of dynamics happening. But now you can see like there's two layers. There's the bottom layer that is darker and there's a above layer. Like this, this stuff here is darker. That's kind of like the bottom layer. And there's like the same layer above it, which is, which is brighter. And as we go, you can see that the bottom layer is shrinking. It's going, it's becoming darker and shrinking underneath the, the, the top layer. And the top layer is also getting darker. And then the top layer turns into, into a cloud. It's becoming bigger, but it's then also dissolving and, and disappearing. So we have like multiple layers on top of each other. Um, bottom layers are getting darker and disappearing. Uh, top layers are brighter, but eventually everything turns into smoke and then uh, dissipates. Here's a different way of looking at explosion. Here are all the frames together so you can see what is happening. And something, something that you see here is that this is a very long explosion. This is 75 frames. That's over a second of explosion. That's a very, very long explosion. I think that's a lot longer than what we had in the basic tutorial. Half of the explosion is spent with smoke. 
roughly half of the explosion. We have the two flash frames at the beginning, then we have the growing fireball, and it gets like really chaotic with the, with the sparks in, in the middle there. And then somewhere around here at frame 39, which is kind of like roughly the middle of the explosion, um, the fireball turns into smoke and then the rest of the explosion is just the smoke dissipating. Okay, so we have a very long explosion, short flash, uh, half of the explosion is fireball phase, the second half of the explosion is kind of like the smoke phase. Okay, all right, so let us now try to um, turn these insights into wisdom. I'm gonna save this, as, I'm gonna save it as blob. We're gonna see why in a second. Right, so let us write these things down. The explosion, the recipe for explosion is first flash, uh, contrast. Um, we're gonna talk about the cost, contrast frame in a second, but um, the, the idea with a con contrast frame is not really to show anything because it's just two frames, you don't really see it, but also just like to, again, to contrast, to give you like this idea that something is very bright or something dark and bright are close to each other. So actually so, what something you sometimes will see is that contrast frames are actually also showing black pixels and white pixels. You get the um, moon crescent shapes quite often, which, um, uh, are have a, like a high contrast, which kind of like again um, emphasizes this idea that something is aggressive to your eyes, you know, like to just you want, you want to shake up the visual visual senses of 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 the of the viewer. Okay, so we have a very short flash and contrast frame. We have a fireball and we have the smoke. And something that we liked is billowing. <clears throat> this actually applies to fireball and smoke. Uh, both fire and smoke are billowing. There's like some kind of movement happening. Mm, going up. This is very important as the motion is, is upwards. Now, to be fair, the explosion that we saw was from a ground enemy. So you have like this kind of like convection stuff more with ground enemies uh, or with like ground explosions. If something explodes in the air, it's more like the spherical explosions we saw in, in um, Macross. But I don't know, we don't have to do realism. It's fine to have like the same explosion, billowing explosion in the, in the air, I think. So there's something going up and then the smoke dissipates. That's also something that we want to want to employ. Oh, there's also something that we need to mean some sparks as well. There's some sparks, like some trails of smart sparks coming coming out of the explosion. Okay, so these are kind of like the qualities we're trying to convey in our explosion. These are the things that we want to focus on. Now again, how are we going to do this? Because again, we can't make sprite animations. And as we saw, 70 frames is out of the question anyway. Like we would don't have enough sprite space to even do one explosion that we saw there. This is just not going to happen. We're not, we can't sprite animate that entire explosion. We have to do some kind of procedural approach. Last time we used circles, but the problem with the circles is that they are a bit flat. So it would be nice to, because like the idea with explosion, like it looks like cloud, like it looks like something that has volume and we don't really get that with flat circles. So what I wanted to introduce or what I want to think about is about, think about blobs. Again, using my beautiful paint thing, but uh, yeah, that's something that we kind of like when you look at some of the um, anime explosions, some of the uh, macros explosions, you know, you quite often have a circle uh, but there's used some shading happening. So when you, you know, this is like, like the, your standard, uh, when you're learning how to draw, your standard thing is to draw an apple, right? And then with the way you draw an apple, it kind of depends on, on how you draw it, but kind of like something like, you, you get something like this, right? Where uh, uh, there's like shading happening, right? You have this uh, a couple of concentric circles, basically, and then you fill them with different shades and then it kind of like looks like uh, more, more like a 3D object because you have like a, um, a specular highlight. You have a bright bright spot where the light is hitting, and then on the edges, on the on the dark side, you have, everything's a bit darker, so it looks a little bit like you know sh the, sh the shadow side of the apple. And you, you can move these things around. Like when you actually drew an apple, you would, it would probably look something like this. You know, you have like a like an apple here, and then the shadow is going to be like here because the, that's where the light is coming from. And there would be maybe a hotspot here, you know. 
Um, but this is kind of like something that I think uh, we're gonna try to do in our explosion. Now our explosion will probably be something like, you know, we're gonna use the explosion colors. So it's gonna be a dark red on the outside here and there's gonna be like uh, maybe an orange here and then like a bright yellow here or maybe like a white in the center, you know, something like this. So we're gonna draw a bunch of circles on top of each other and we're gonna make them try to look them three-dimensional by um, changing the, the shade, the, the color going from the from this the center here to the outside, okay? And that's kind of like what we saw again with the, with the macros stuff, with the enemy kind of stuff. We quite often saw circles shaded in different way, combined each other. So we have like this kind of like, again, like a raspberry or like a grapevine. Of, of, of balls suspended in space and maybe they're moving around a little bit. Um, but the basic, the atom of our explosion is gonna be like this kind of little blob here. This kind of a like couple of circles laid on top of each other. And that's something that we're gonna to do today. We're gonna to do that blob. Right, so let's try to make our explosion atom first. Let's try to make that blob happen. And then we're gonna think about how to turn that into an explosion. Right, so um, let's go function in it function draw function update update 60 okay so let us do um cls 12 here so we have our blue background that's something that we have in our movement thing it kind of like matches the color scheme of our of our initial uh mock-up now <clears throat> We have to figure out maybe a name for um, for our array. Let's go with parts. This is our particle array, and we're going to add particles to this particle array. And we're going to, I'm going to immediately add a particle to this particle array. Um, we already had that before, um, and then we're going to put it in a particles should have a location. So we're going to go x y. And then we're gonna add a, s well, okay, let's not add the color yet, but we definitely wanna go R, that's the radius of our little blob, right? Okay, so we added now our particle. And now I want to actually, um, when we draw them, we're gonna go for P in all parts. We're gonna loop through all of the particles and we're just gonna do um, blob. We're gonna run a blob function on that particle. I'm gonna create that function here right now. Mm, let's, go, let's call it P. Okay, so this is the drawing. Um, let us now just do like a circle for now. Circ fill <coughs> p.x, uh, p.y dot r and uh, let's mess make it yellow 10. explosion finished see you next episode <laughs> yeah i mean okay we have a circle that's good but we now have to kind of like think about the shading of the circle this is just a circle again we want to make it more look more three dimension dimensional and we're going to think about that in a second how that works uh, but first uh, something i want to do and something i want to also do is like to make sure that the circle looks nice uh, in different scales. So maybe I want to set up a situation where I can change the size of the circle. And in fact, um, I'm gonna create something like my BLB. I'm gonna get this out, this particle out. So it's saved in this, in this variable called my BLB. And we're adding this my BLB to the, our particle array. And now I can do something like if um, B uh, in the update function, if btn p left, um, the symbol is created with shift L, uh, then, and, and if btn p shift R, then. And now I can do something like b, my blob dot R minus equal one. So we're gonna decrease the radius of the blob when you go when we press right. I'm gonna increase the radius of the blob if we press left. So now we can change the size of this particle and we can see how the shading works in a different scales. Now, one last thing I want to maybe add is I want to actually print 
the radius of the blob on the screen so I know which uh, which scale we're talking about right now. So I'm going to print my blb.r and I'm going to print it at 64, I don't know, 120. Nah, I don't know, maybe it's too low. Let's see, let's see. And then, um, well, maybe. That's a bit too low. Uh, let's go like this. Okay, good. So you can see now I'm seeing the size of the blob um, and I can change the size of the blob and, and I can see what's what. Perfect. Okay, so now what we're trying to do is we're not gonna dry, just draw one circle, we're gonna draw multiple circles on top of each other with different colors. So how are we going to do this? Well, we can just like multiply it and just do multiple circle statements. But we're gonna start like getting into like, this is, this is, this is a lot of manipulation of different values and so forth. And I, I'm just like, I'm the kind of guy who's gonna go like, let's just create a little, little array for this. Um, so let's let's create an array uh, that is kind of like a thickness. Like I, I call it PHK. Maybe maybe R. Like like underscore R would be also good. Like the radius of the different circles because we're going to draw multiple circles on top of each other and they get, we're going to get smaller. So we want to have an array that uh, uh, remembers the size of the different circles. Um, let's just let's call it PHK for now. And let's put some values in, in here. So we're gonna go um, p, um, p dot r. That's gonna be our first circle that we're gonna go draw. It's gonna be just as big as the uh, the actual blob is supposed to be. But the second one is supposed to be a, a bit smaller. And then we it's gonna be even even more smaller. Okay, something like this. So we just let's draw draw like three circles. And then we're gonna go four i equals one two. Um, Let's go hashtag thk do. And then we're gonna do, we're gonna draw this. And then instead of the PR here, we're just gonna go um, thk. We're gonna grab the values of the circles from the, from the array. So thk i. Now we also need to change the colors because when you do this like this, like just nothing changes, right? Because we need to change the colors of the circles as we go. So let's create a new array called color and it's like the outer one is going to be maybe like two then we're going to draw a, an orange that's going to be nine and then we're going to draw a white uh, uh, the yellow that's going to be ten okay and then when we draw the color we're going to grab the values from that array Ooh. okay and actually this might be already a good Explosion blob, like uh, depending on, on how you feel about this, this might be a good explosion blob. Something I don't like is that it's when it gets too small, this center circle kind of disappears. So that's a bit of a problem. Um, but yeah, in order to, because this doesn't, doesn't look really 3D, it's just like concentric circles. In order to make it 3D, you saw that on our um, paint illustration, the circles were, didn't have the same center. They were kind of shifted up, shifted up a little bit. So I want to do that next. So one simple solution here is actually to maybe instead of just taking saving the entire radius of the thing, we're just going to save something like zero minus two minus four in this array, and then here when we draw the radius, we're going to go um, p dot r minus the thickness, right? So oh, something is wrong. Oh, I, that minus it should be plus. There we go. <clears throat> so you can see we achieved the same thing, but now we have this thickness here saved in, the, in this array instead of the radius, and that allows us to shift the circles up by the amount we decreased the radius. Um, let me show you real quick, and then I can I can I can explain maybe. I'm gonna move these things around a little bit. See, we lay a bunch of circles on top of each other and we make them darker as we go to the outside. Or like basically the first circles we draw are darker and then subsequent smaller circles are drawn in a lighter color and that's how we get kind of like this more, this looks more like a blob. This looks like a, like a spherical, something that has volume uh, because we did this kind of shading thing. Okay, that's good. I'm thinking maybe adding a, a, a fourth circle yeah, let's add a fourth circle. 
So maybe we're going to add a white circle on top and then we're going to do a six here. So now you can really see a really nice shading happen. That's good. Now there's a bit of a problem here and that is there's a certain, like this looks good, this looks like a blob, this looks like a circle, but this doesn't really, this looks more like a pyramid, right? Like it's, it's, it's not really, the ratio between the circles is kind of like, it seems like it changes as the circle grows. And that's to be expected because we kind of have, have this same change in thickness. So um, the ratio between the thickness between the circles and the diameter of the, of the, of the individual circles changes, right? So if you have like very small circles, the differences in the thickness between circles are gigantic. So it looks more like a cone. And as you get to a really large diameter, the differences between the circles are relatively small compared to the radius of the entire circle. Uh, what I'm saying here is we need to kind of like make this dependent on the radius of the circle. So something we can do here is um, p dot r. So we take the radius and we multiply it by a number. So something like 0 0.05 and the next one is by 0 0.01 and the next one is by 0 0.02 or something like this. Let's see how that works. Uh, that doesn't work. Ah, it doesn't work because we're, we're, it's supposed to, like, that's why I had negative values here before. Let's do it a minus in here instead of changing the negative because I think that's, that makes more sense. Yes, this is good. So now you can see the thickness stays consistent, like relatively consistent. We get problems when the blob gets really small, but otherwise, like, it looks like as we're looking at the same blob, right? Something I wanted to maybe tweak is, uh, and I have to, like, this is something where you start to have to start experimenting with values that look good. I think something that worked well for me was like 1.5 and 3 here. Yeah. This looks, mm, this looks very close to a sphere, I feel. This looks like a spherical, like a blob, like explosion blob, right? <clears throat> great, 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 great. Now, again, we have some problems here. There, it's, it's not a perfect solution. So we notice that once we get to like six, once we get to six, our blob starts looking really bad. This is now we lost the orange. So we kind of like drawing an additional circle for, for nothing. And then as we go to three, now we just basically have two circles. Now, now there's just like very little circles left. And this is just like, ugh, what is even this? You know, like the lower values kind of look, look bad. We lose the individual circles. Um, and then eventually it's like, at the, especially at the one and two and uh, three is kind of okay. Uh, one and two kind of like look really bad. Another thing that we also have to think about is kind of um, performance. We're drawing a lot of circles here. And actually, if you did the performance test with circles, like that's something that some people did in the comment section, instead of drawing a lot of sprites on the, on the screen, you just drew, use the circle fill function. Um, those are actually faster than drawing sprites. But still, each individual blob is consists of multiple circles. So, and we're going to have multiple blobs and explosions. So we want to make sure that the explosions are nice and efficient. So basically what we want to do, we want to draw less circles as the blob gets smaller because you don't see the extra circles anyway. Like you can stop drawing the orange circle at this point because we don't see it anyway. And the reason why we don't see it anyway is because of this. Um, um, the circle fill function only um, uh, with the radius, it only accepts integer values. And when the circle gets small enough, these statements here, some of these will be the same. So we will just draw the same circle on top of each other because it gets rounded down to the next number. And when this number gets small enough, it's just the same number. Okay, so let us try to make this work. Let us, we basically have to make like an if statement here. We're gonna go if, um, now there's a problem here. Like if the radius is a comma value, I, the if statements might get a bit wonky and you know, the re final result, it's going to be a comma value anyway, right? Uh, it's going to be an integer value anyway. Like we are feeding in the circle function, as I said, uh, always expects uh, integer value. So let us turn the radius into an integer. So we don't go something like local my error 
equals um, p dot r floor. We just floor it. And then we can, every time we use the p dot r, we can use my r. That's kind of nice um, because uh, this is two tokens and this is one token. So we save some tokens, but obviously this costs a six token in the first place. So I don't know if we're going to get into the positive here in the first place, but with this my r is going to be, um, it's going to be a, a more predictable value. Um, so now we can do something like if my r is, and let's see where we're going to do the cutoff point. So we see at six, it doesn't even matter if we're drawing, uh, uh, it, we're drawing three or four circles, but I think we can even at eight, even at eight, and I did some experiments pre previously, but I felt like at eight, we can go down to just drawing three circles. I don't think we need to draw four circles at this size anyway. So we're gonna go, if my R is smaller or equals eight, then, and then we're just drawing three circles. So we can just remove, or something we, do, we can do is we can remove some values from these, um, from these arrays, and that will get us with just less circles. So for example, if you're gonna go, um, the a delete and we previously had this idea that we have an array and a value and we can delete a value from an array um, but there's actually a different function that's kind of like really nice which is called deli <laughs> it's like the deli um, which deletes a certain entry in an array so for example there deli uh, thk1 would delete the first entry and the deli uh, thk2 would delete the second entry, right? So this allows us to eliminate individual entries from an array. All right, so let us just remove like the final entry here, uh, here, and then we also del delete a color entry. Now the colors are just really just temporary, so it actually doesn't really matter. Um, I'm just gonna delete, let's say the dark orange. So let's just delete the nine. So that's gonna be entry number two. So you can see now, once we get into from nine to eight, we only see three circles. And that's good because most of the time our, um, our blobs will be relatively small. Um, so we're, it's gonna be a bit more efficient just drawing three circles instead of drawing all four all the time. I feel that four circles are really necessary if the blob is really, really big. Um, that gives you like this, you know, very high resolution ball effect. If it gets this size, like this still looks like a ball to me, like this, this is fine. And it's going to be even different when we, when we change the shading a little bit. So this is still okay. Now we want to eventually maybe turn down to just two circles. So we're going to have to find out like the cutoff point where that happens. And it's like at six, like six, we only have two circles anyway. So we can just, just as well draw two circles. So yeah, um, let's go like, if my r smaller than equals than six, then else if like this. So at six, we are deleting the original ones, but we also delete some, and we're gonna make this more optimal in a second here, but yeah, we just eliminate even more stuff. So then now we eliminate this first one. So uh, this and the color we are going to eliminate. Um, yeah, let's let's stick to, let's stick with two. Okay. And again, this is one of the situations where you know you really have to just start tweaking around and playing around with these values and finding you know values that work well for you. Um, I cannot really replicate that experience for you right now because I kind of like already did this before. I know kind of like what I'm, I'm going for. Um, but yeah, that's basically what I did. I just like went through this animation over and over again and looked at, you know, what looked good and what didn't good look good and tried to find, you know, the values that I am most happy with. So let me give you my recipe for the circles that I came up, came up with after some experimentation and I'm going to step you through what, what this thought process was. So I actually have a difference between six and five. I actually draw three circles when I'm when I'm uh, when, when it's exactly six, and then when it's more than eight, I draw four circles. And when uh, I go down to just two circles at five, I thought six still looks a little bit flat uh, if it's just two circles. 
So this is actually going to be the 5 version and the 6 version, we're just going to remove a different thickness here. We're going to delete uh, thickness 3 from here, like this. So you can see at 6 we still have 3 circles and then we go down to 2 circles at 5. I think that, that looked a little bit better because the 6 was still quite a big blob. So I wanted to still stick around at 3 circles at, at, at radius 6 and then go to just 2 circles at 5. And then we're going to talk about 1 and 2 radius later. This is something that is going to require extra attention because this is kind of like at this point the circle idea kind of break, breaks down. We have like such tiny circles. That's not even a circle anymore. That's just a cross. That's an individual dot, you know. It's, we cannot really use the same method of drawing circles at this size. And actually it might be worthwhile drawing sprites at this size anyway. It's kind of difficult. But yeah, generally everything looks okay now. Like we have our little little animation, we go down and then the amount of circles as we get smaller, that's good. We're gonna clear this up later on, but we're gonna first also address something else and that is the color stuff. I want to deal with the colors. Right now the colors are kind of placeholders. There's two problems with the colors, right? The, the way we're using them right now. They kind of look nice, but there's a problem. The problem is that First of all, it's four colors. It's four colors to describe one single particle and animating that would be a nightmare. We have to animate four different colors every time there's like some kind of change. You saw how we looked at the animation in Odon Pachi. It kind of like changes from like a bright color to like a deep orange to like a smoke, you know. This whole color transition, doing it with four colors at the same time would, is, is ugh, that's bad. So we want to maybe reduce the amount, number of colors. Second thing is, it is a bit of a clean ball. And if you look at some of the examples, like the Akira stuff, for example, like sure, we had like just one colored balls there as well, but we also had like some like noise in there as well. Like there was some kind of like little dust particles and it looked like it was a bit sketchy, you know, like explosion is not something that's so neat usually. It kind of like has some, some perturbations to it. So what I want to do in the next episode is I want to change the way we shape this blob and I want to use um, patterns to use the shading. So we only have two colors and we use kind of like dithering patterns to shade this ball. And this is also going to be what is going to be the doggy zone. That's right. Yes, 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 ladies and gentlemen. So the doggy zone, as I already said, is I want you to try to remove this, these colors. Not going to use any kind of colors, just going to use one color or like two colors uh, to some extent. And I want you to use with the two inner circles. Um, so right now the orange and the yellow circle. I want you to use dithering patterns on those. I think this will give us more of an explosion e vibe. But it's going to be up to you to explore this and kind of like experiment with this. I want you to get, you know, get into the habit of experimenting with this a little bit. And just so you know what we're talking about, this is uh, pico8wiki.com. This is the, my commercial free wiki copy that I set up, pico8wiki that I set up. And the function that we're going to experiment with is fill p. So I want you to get into this function, find out how it works, and use um, the different dithering patterns that we have available here. I want you to use those to shade the two mid circles from this explosion, okay? And if you're already kind of like getting bored and stuff like that, you can already start thinking about how to animate this. So maybe create a little animation where maybe a bunch of those blobs appear, get bigger and smaller. That's something that you can already start experimenting with because that's also something that we're gonna do next time around. Maybe not on the next episode, but you know, in the future. But for now, this is the part where we're going to talk about coffee, where I'm going to give a big shout out and big thank you to all the people out there on coffee.com supporting this show, making this show possible. Today I want to read out some newcomers. Ever since I started phase two of the Schmup tutorial, we got a lot of new subscriptions and one-time donations and I want to thank you all the new people who joined us, which are Deimos, Even, Loki Striker, Evil Paper, Shufu, Hot Dog Ontology, Booper Dopper, Twister PT, Carl, Doom and Gloom, Mladen Michalovic, Amok, Madman, Jamigans, Sturk, Otello Vieira, Demeke, 
ZLTZ, Red Beer 1972, Emily, Power Lag, XWBXO, Blue, Hannes Roots, and Fizzgig. Thank you so much for supporting this show. And if you people out there who are not yet supporting the show want to support the show, you can do so at coffee.com slash lazydevs. One of the perks is that you get new episodes earlier. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. So this is a bit of a difficult situation that we're in right now. We're doing explosions. It's kind of like a complex system that we're setting up, but we're getting there. We're getting there. Next time, we're gonna do some dithering. See you next time around, guys. Bye-bye.